Welcome to 5313 Clinical Procedures for Advanced Practice Nurses. I am Patricia Meadows and I will be your instructor for this course. This week we start our courses with five lectures. The first one is Introduction to Radiology, then Normal Chest Anatomy, Basic Chest Radiograph Interpretation, Recognizing Normal and Abnormal X-rays, and Finishing Up with Radiology of the Spine. Conventional radiographs or x-ray films are produced using ionized radiation generated by x-ray machines and viewed on a monitor or a light box. X-rays are relatively inexpensive, widely available, and can be portable. X-ray images are limited as to the sensitivity of findings that they are capable of displaying. A good all-around term used to describe any type of rendering of a radiologic examination is an image. Examples of images include ultrasound, CT scans, and x-ray films. Another common term used in radiology is contrast, also known as dye. This is a substance that is administered to a patient in order to make certain structures more easily visible. Examples of contrast include oral barium, iodine, and oral and IV contrast. X-ray films, or plain films, are images produced by a combination of X-ray and light striking a piece of photographic film that is then processed in a dark room. Digital radiography, which is seen most often in clinics these days, includes photographic film replaced by cassettes or plates which is then processed by an electronic reader so the image could be stored digitally. PACS are, is the acronym for Picture Archiving Communication Storage System, where studies are maintained on computer servers on which images can be archived, communicated, and stored. When you look at an object head-on, you are seeing it in face. A lesion seen tangently from the side is seen in profile. This involves making a mental reconstruction of a three-dimensional object from a two-dimensional projection of conventional radiograph. This is a chest x-ray with the thoracic structures outlined. Terms that describe the orientation of X-ray beams include horizontal, which is an X-ray beam directed horizontally between the tube and the cassette. Horizontal X-ray beams are usually parallel to the floor of the examining table. An example of this is an upright chest X-ray. Another term that describes the orientation of X-ray beams is vertical, which is an X-ray between the tube and the cassette. Examples include supine x-ray of the abdomen with the patient lying on the examining table. Air fluid or fat fluid level is an interface between two substances of different densities in which the lighter substance rises above and forms a straight edge interface with the heavier substance below. In conventional radiology, an air fluid or fat fluid level will be visible only if the x-ray beam is horizontal, regardless of the position of the patient. Any study with the terms erect, upright, cross table, or decubitus is always done with horizontal beams. You can see fluid levels, if present, with any of these types of studies. The five basic densities seen on x-rays include air, which appears blackest on a radiograph, fat, which appears as a lighter shade of gray than air on the radiograph, soft tissue or fluid, which appears the same on conventional radiograph, calcium, such as contained in bone, which appears white, Metal appears the whitest on a radiograph. Normal objects of 
metal density are not present in the body unless the patient has had previous surgeries or therapeutic interventional procedures. Examples of these are contrast media, prosthetic knees or hips, intravascular devices such as stents, coils, etc., and tissue markers. Of course, you can also see metal if the person has had uh, something poke into them in, as a foreign body. Pearls of wisdom when reviewing x-rays include the denser an object is, the more x-ray it absorbs and the wider it appears on radiographic images. The less dense an object is, the fewer x-rays it absorbs and the blacker it will appear on radiologic images. Remember when you're looking at an image, think about it as you are facing your patient. Therefore, your right is the patient's left and your left is the patient's right. Many radiographic films will have labels as part of the study identifying which side of the film is the patient's right or left. This is usually in the upper corner of the image. When ordering a radiograph, remember that radiologists can only make an interpretation of a radiograph based on what they know is the indication for the test. Provide ample information regarding the patient's history or indication for the exam. Remember the adage, you can only see what you look for and you only look for what you know.